Good morning. I want to invite you to be in prayer for the Nutter family. Susan has graduated from this earth and went to heaven uh, before yesterday, and so RBM is praying for the Nutter family. Those of you who know David and Susan and the children, remember them to, to, to tomorrow morning as a 10 a.m. service at Mount Bethel Church in Marietta, Georgia. Mount Bethel Church in Marietta, Georgia. 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, a service and reception as follows. The topic today is how can a demon spirit indwell the same body at the same time as the Holy Spirit does? Is that a true statement or a false statement? We need to study this because it's important. As you deal with Christians, especially us, ministry, Rick Bonfield Ministries, as we deal with deliverance and deal with people of all kinds, as what's going on with them and how do we deal with that? Well, I've been up to my neck up in that type of question. I've dealt with it. I've lived with it. I've, and it seems to me that uh, it's about time we consider this. The New Testament uh, word for spirit is pneuma, pneuma, in contradiction for, from the natural or soulish, soulish. Pneuma is different. In the, the spirit is that part of man which has the ability to grasp and perceive divine things. And the soulish is something that, uh, that uh, cannot perceive spiritual things. And so there's a lot of soulish in us, but you can't have the Holy Spirit, and the revelation of the Holy Spirit will lead you to understand people that are struggling with evil spirits. Amen? First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, but a natural man, First Corinthians 2, 14, the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man receives not the Spirit, the things of the Spirit of God. So it speaks of the individual who is not born again, has no relationship with Christ, or has not confessed Jesus Christ as, the, as their Lord and Savior. They cannot understand these things. They have a soulish mentality that rationalizes. Only the regenerated spirit of man can understand the things of the spirit. So, now the word soul comes from the word psychic. I know you know about this, but I'm, I'm dealing with it to remind you so we can all grow together and be able to understand these things more properly. The word soul is the word psychic. This word defines the self, life, the emotions, the intellect, the will. Paul shows us that as being a threefold being. And you find that in Thessalonians chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 23. May the very God of peace sanctify you completely. May the very God of peace sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's referring here to the coming of Jesus, the rapture of saints. And uh, this verse is a very important verse. So any involvement, be righteous or unrighteous, affects the whole man and not just the physical part as some people teach meaning that sin affects the physical affects the soul and affects the body the spirit soul and body all three are impacted by that so a man that lives without grace is a man that cannot overcome sin so now the scripture also teaches something very important. 
that prior to the salvation of man, man is dead in trespasses and sins. Man is dead in trespasses and sins. And I want to get into Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 1. In you has he quickened or made a life who were dead in trespasses and sins. So you've been quickened. You've been brought alive. You've been sort of touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. And your life drastically changed you. You're not the same person anymore. That is the greatest miracle of salvation. Now, so Jesus comes into the human spirit and brings life into this person. It's in 1 John 5. It's way back, uh, uh, way back in the end of the scriptures. 1 John 5. And uh, the verse here is uh, 11 and 12. 5, 11 and 12. It says this. And this is the record that God has given us to us eternal life. And this life is in, is in his, soul, his son. And this is the record, the record of the word of God, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is given through the son. So, now, so Jesus has made provisions then for the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Spirit works with the soul, the spirit, and the body. He doesn't work just with the spirit. He works with the soul, spirit, and body. And so, but part of the responsibility now rests on us. Read Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. It's a, it's a hard scripture to find, but here, here we go. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, listen to this. This is your responsibility. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Paul, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your salvation with fear. And, and so this is the, resp <coughs> of the responsibility of the Christian. The Christian has responsibility. And that's his responsibility to work out his salvation and make sure the spirit, soul, and body are working together. And you're developing all three together. Not, a lot of people work with the spirit, but their body falling apart. A lot of people work with the soul in one area. Spirit, soul, and body. You work with the soul, but you don't work with the spirit. And so there are a lot of Christians who have a soulish understanding of the work of the cross because their spirit is not mis it's misinformed. It's not informed. It's not dealt with. It's not taught. And the spirit has the same value as the soul, and the soul has the same value as the body. You've got to make sure your body line up with the word of God. <coughs> now, oh, hallelujah. I'm, I'm, ticking, I'm ticking off the... <laughs> okay, now. Now, I want to tell you something very important, and this is old information for me, but I want to tell you. The word salvation in this passage that, that, I, that I just read made me, uh, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence, but as, I, as in my Bible says, work out your sal own salvation. This word salvation here, the word is soteria. In Tyre's lexicon, you know Tyre's lexicon, it's a popular lexicon that you can buy in any store, gives the primary meaning of this word deliverance. And the, the, the definition in Tyre's lexicon is deliverance from the molestation of enemies. Salvation means deliverance from the molestation of enemies. You didn't know that, did you? That will surprise you to know that salvation is to, is to get away from demons and be saved from them. Okay, now, the picture becomes clear then, a little clear now, because we're dealing 
with a question. How can a demon spirit indwell the same body at the same time as the Holy Spirit does? So here, here, here the picture becomes clear. It says this, Jesus has delivered our spirit from the power of Satan. Jesus has delivered our spirit from the power of Satan. Now he says to us, work out your salvation from molestation of enemies until you have freed both soul and body. Because the battle begins with the spirit. The battle doesn't belong with the soul, or the body does not belong with the body. The body can't help much. It's just a, a shell. But when the Holy Spirit gets hold of your spirit, the change begins to come naturally. And that's the problem with Christians. We seem to think that the thing to, to, to be saved is use your intellect, your rationale, your mind, your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. You work your salvation with mind, will, and emotions. You sense the presence of God, but because your spirit is not informed, not taught, not disciple, you have a form of godliness that denies the power. That's what John Wesley feared so much, is that the people of God would be a, 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 a group of people who had a problem with the spirit, so they just invested the soul into it. And the soul is will, mind, and emotions. He cannot teach the spirit. The spirit teaches the soul. Not the soul teaches the spirit. Am I communicating with you? Amen. Amen. So now, uh, so now it's clear. Jesus has delivered our spirit from the power of Satan. Now, that says to us then, work out your salvation. Work out your own deliverance from the molestation of enemies until you have freed both soul and body. I don't know who, who is not working on that. I have to work with it every day. Every morning I have to go to my couch and kneel down and say, Lord, a battle is intense. I don't have the will and the power to get it done. If you don't help me, I'm going to quit. I need your help this morning. To, make, to get in this battle. <coughs> now, good. So, what is, what is the, why the misunderstanding in this area is so important to people who are leaders, spiritual leaders? Because, you see, us as an evangelist, you as a pastor, you as a Bible teacher, or you as a, a, a child, a minister to young people and to children. Not understanding this properly will cost you. Now, there are many, many false teachers in this area. Erroneous, unscriptural positions that believers cannot have a demon. The first one that I found out to be a problem is that the old sin nature becomes the whipping boy. You always blame on the old sin nature. Well, the problem is the old sin nature is coming, and what is coming is a big old demon inside of your living room where your house is packed with things that are ungodly before the Lord, <coughs> and you are trying to get away from that. you got to face it. That's one enemy, Satan. And he is coming. Jesus was tempted by him and we overcame him with three verses of Deuteronomy. And you have to understand that Satan wants to hide. Number two, all problems in this area are thought to be due to the lack of surrender. I didn't surrender enough, Brother Rick. I've been to the altar 1,368,000 times. And I haven't surrendered, and I surrender, and I surrender, and I surrender some more, and, and I keep on surrendering, and nothing happens. Well, you have an evil spirit that is trying to destroy your life, destroy who you are. And you, if you're strong enough to resist him and to be in front of him, you can win. So it's, it's, it's not really nothing to do with a lack of surrender. Does that mean to some to you? 
lack of surrender. Okay. Third, people are left open to be snared into cults by angels of light. So all inherited characteristics are thought to be unchangeable. All inherent characteristics. For instance, <coughs> that's the way it is in my family. My father loved alcohol. He became an alcoholic. And the children became alcoholics. It is just inherent from my father. You know, he, we saw him drink and we decided to drink. Well, how about a big old demon of McDaniel there? <laughs> right, right behind your kitchen door. You see, you expose children to alcohol, and when they're in trouble, they depend on alcohol. <coughs> Mental health programs. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing that you're trying to change something demonic with a mental health program. You're denying the cross. You're denying Jesus. You deny the power of the Holy Spirit. All problems is result of her 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 heredity. Heredity. You can't you can't help people without reprimanding that which is spiritual. Now demons are given legal ground to stay when a person sits under teaching that denies that a Christian can have a demon. Demons are given, you give them legal rights. When you give them legal rights, you're actually wasting your time because nothing was going to change. Now, you, you might say, Rick, uh, 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 I've been blessed by your ministry. No, no, I haven't, you haven't been blessed by my ministry. You've been blessed by Jesus. And what's happening now throughout the world is that ministries just sit tight with a million dollars. And though they don't touch this area because it's just it's controversial. Well, I tell you, uh, you're going to have to. You're going to have to do it. Amen. All right. Also, reinforces spiritual pride which keeps leaders from re-examining their teachings and retracting an error. It involves spiritual pride. You just think you're right, and that's the way you are. And, uh, but the fruits are not there. You see, 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 the fruits is people that were in a bad shape in your church. Suddenly, they become a great blessing, and life changes. David Nutter is one of the great, great Christians I have ever met in my life. Author of many books, testimonies of what God has done through him, Throughout the work land. Jesus met him. I met David Nutter. A disciple and taught him and taught him. But Jesus met him. And the fruit there simply means that if I was a false prophet, there would be nothing on David Nutter that you like to keep and to listen. And so I'm surrounded by people with, with gifts, with fruits, fruits for eternity. People that are real, genuine Christians that fight the devil. Now, you probably say, work, but they're, that, that, they're not Methodists. I haven't been called to be a Methodist. Come on, give me a break. I haven't been called to be an Assembly of God or to, to be a, a, a church, global church or united, whatever. I've been called to serve the Lord, to serve Jesus. That's my... And so, and so you might say to me, Rick, your theology a little bit is a little bit different but it has brought hundreds and thousands to Christ. All right. Okay. Despair and hopelessness are fostered within the demonized. I want to read this because, you know, uh, I was doing a master's degree in communication when I wrote this. And sometimes... I feel like I remember what happened that day. Listen to this. Despair and hopelessness are fostered within the demonized. They don't have any hope. They don't have any joy. They're falling apart left and right everywhere. 
And the Lord cannot help them because they're bound up by wrong theology. And so, now, and finally, despair gives ground, gives ground to accept as law all medical diagnosis and medication. There's not a little door that the illness perhaps be demonic. Well, Jesus saw demonic illness, <clears throat> but we can't. That's something of the past. It passed by. It's over. It doesn't depend on. I'm not saying that every people that I prayed for was healed. I'm saying that, uh, that a lot of people that I prayed for were healed. Okay, now, all right, we have 9 minutes and 38 seconds before we finish this morning. So let's define the word believer. Let's define the word believer. Who is a believer? And what we're doing here this morning under the topic is this. How can a demon spirit indwell the same body at the same time as the Holy Spirit does? We're dealing with that. And so I'm, I'm working the ground up and trying to get you to communicate with you and try to give you biblical. So there's a lot of scriptures coming up here. If I, so help my fingers, Lord, to find all of this. <laughs> all right. So, who is a believer? Let's define the word believer. Because so many promises are given to those who are believers, it is important to know who the Bible classifies as a believer. In the, in the Greek, the word believe indicates one relying on Jesus Christ for salvation. That's what the word believe means. In Acts 5.14, Acts 5.14, the word means unadulterated trust. Let me read 5.14. And believers were the most added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. Forty to fifty thousand were added, believers. The word believer here in this in the Greek text on Acts chapter 5, verse 14, means unadulterated trust. Now, 1 Timothy 4.12. Let's find 1 Timothy 4.12. Amen. Amen. First Timothy, we have to go way down there. Hold on, hold on. First Timothy 4.12, can you help me? First Timothy 4.12, let no man despise thy youth. Let no, no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believer. But be now an example of the believer. Yes. Now, okay. Go ahead. In Tw word and conversation. In word and conversation. In charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, trueness, to entrust one's spirit to faith, assurance, well-being. That is the definition of First, First Timothy four twelve. <coughs> let's uh, let's take a look at that just a little bit more, okay? Uh, because there's something here, amen. I'm having, I'm having a hard time with 1 Timothy. Hold on. 1 Timothy 4.12. Read it one more time. Let no man despise thy youth. Yes. Be thou an example of the believer. Okay. 1 12. We're going to stop right there. 1 Timothy 4.12. Let's go to 4. Let's go to verse 12. Let no man despise your youth. Be thou an example to the believers, number one. In word, in spirit, in faith, in purity. We can only be brought to a Christian by the work of the cross, with the Holy Spirit being able to bring about these, these graces. If your life is something difficult to look at because you're kicking left and right and you have no relationship with Christ, you're, you're not saved. 
You have a form of to think that you are, but you're not because you don't have any fruits coming out of you. It's just hell all the time. You need to repent and come to Jesus. Amen. That was a scripture there. First Timothy was hiding away, wasn't it? We picked it up. <laughs> we just grab it, grab, grab it right there. Okay, now. A checklist for believers. Let me, let me, let me, let me go through this. John 15, 2. Now, John is easy to find. John 15, 2. All right? John chapter 15, verse 2. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, it purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Purge simply means, you know, I have a peace lily. I have four peace lilies in my condominium there. And so in the morning, I put sun on top of it. I turn the blind, the Venetian blinds, to, so the sun can hold it and bathe them with light. Then I pick up a scissor, and I, and I, and I go uh, 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 around the base and take all the yellow leaves that are dying, the, the, that word down there is, uh, it means purge it. So God does that to me. He's got a big scissor for Rick. And he purge, purge them, purge him, purge them, purge them, so I can have more fruits and more fruits and more fruits. So you must bear fruit if you are a Christian, if you are a believer. First John, John 15, 2. You must have signs shall follow, Mark 16. Now that's a very powerful scripture. Mark 16. Verses, in these signs shall follow them who believe. In my name they shall out cast out devils. Jesus defeated the devil False, all the demons of spirit at the cross. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the teeth of Satan. Satan is a demon that has no teeth. It's a horrible thing. They shall take up serpents, demon spirits. Luke 10, 19 has nothing to do with reptiles. Go to, go to, go to, uh, Luke 10, 19. I think we can do that, can we? Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. 10, 19. Amen. Amen. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all over the power of the enemy. So it's referring to evil spirits, not reptiles. And nothing shall be any means hurt you. Nothing by any means will hurt you. So, signs shall follow. So let me ask you, do you have any signs? Do you have any signs that come out of your life to bless other people? You've got to understand this, that if you don't have any signs yet, it's God is working you out. But you have to be humble to learn how to deal with people and how to understand them and what they're going through. And when you do that, you are blessing Jesus. Because the Lord Jesus dealt with all kinds of people with horrible problems. From women to men, horrible problems. And he didn't run away from them. He blessed them, he healed them, he delivered them. Okay, good. All right, okay. I'm talking about a checklist for believers. Okay, how about, how about John 14, 12? Hmm. Oh, my goodness gracious. John 14, 12, a checklist for believers. John 14, 12. Let me go to John 14, 12. It says this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he who believes on me, the works that I do shall, be, shall he do also. 
that these shall, be, shall he do, and greater works shall he do because I go to my Father. That's the quality of a believer. Amen? Well, let me just stop for a prayer, and, uh, and I'll be, here, be back here tomorrow. God, I just ask you, Lord, that my brother and my sister will give a chance to hear what I have to say, that they will not uh, uh, <clears throat> reject what I'm saying, that they will check the word as I'm checking the word. As to the definition of what a believer is. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray and I believe. Amen.